All right. I think we're recording. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, <laughs> Here we are. We're, we've changed positions once again. Different, yeah, different seating arrangement. I like it, though. Three weeks in a row. and Did Patty different. complain because she sat beside me? She did. Yes. That I was mean to you? Yes. <laughs> I was not mean to you. <laughs> She's like, there's the smell I would never, I would the never, whole time. I would never. I can't smell, so you're good there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. Thank no you, doubt. COVID. That is true. Yes. yes. Isn't that wild? She still can't smell since COVID. Really? Mm-hmm. You can't smell anything? Mm-hmm. Does it affect like food you eat or do you just have a memory? Somewhat. I have to. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying though? Because they say the reason like we taste because we can smell it. Yeah. It's like, like a certain percentage or something. With, with, uh, yeah. Do you know that the uh, lead singer for NXS, do you remember that, that yeah. band? That he, I think actually killed himself, eventually killed himself because he had, a, he had an accident, fell down, lost his sense of smell. And I just know that was a, like a part of him just wow. can't, can't do life. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. Well, yeah. On a lighter I don't know note, I know that random, yeah, that random fact. But. A Swiss roll cake still <laughs> but, tastes but, the well, same yeah, to me. Yeah, well, boom! Look at this, Jeff Vaught. So, hey, uh, goes right into that. Zanger, you raised dude. a good question. So, what? if you can't, if is the smell, is your smell just a memory, or is it something you've never? Right. Like, so, if, if you tried something new for the first time, which I've never had a zinger, but you're going to be able to taste it because you can smell it. Because I can smell it and taste it. But so. I don't think that it, if it was just smell, then you wouldn't have taste buds. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's you definitely get, a mixture, but it's a like fifty percent or something. Yes. It's just a percent percent. Have you ever have you ever tasted something and said, Ooh, that tastes like cat food? No. I wouldn't but have how, a reference for But that's what I'm saying food. though. Have, but yeah. but check this out though. You would have a reference to know how cat food smells. Smells, yeah. Yeah. That's true. And so you ate something. And maybe the, it was the smell you're responding yeah. to. It. Not, yeah, I don't think I've never eaten mm. cat food. I, I was be like, curious. Wow, that's not, that tastes familiar. <laughs> I was actually disturbed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think it has to do with your smell. Yeah. yeah. You're probably so right. if you can't smell, then you're eating things based on a memory of what you remember mm-hmm. that tasting like. Yeah. It's like the one time I ever had octopus. Uh, no, I've actually had it twice. Really? Not like calamari, not squid, but like octopus. We had it at a luau uh, when, when my family went in like sixth grade, and it tastes like a lake. And I know octopus comes from the ocean, but all I could say, like, it literally just tastes like a lake, mm-hmm. you know, like a nasty like, lake. I guess I have tasted a lake, though. I was going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> have you tasted a nasty lake? Yep. Like yeah. old hickory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. I just think a drink of old hickory. Smell. But anyways, the zingers. Yeah, Jeff Vault Dude, they're amazing. today. So you've never had a zinger? I've never had a zinger. So on the podcast, this is going to be our debut of Cameron eating a zinger. <laughs> it is on. Because Julie got some for Patty, so, and you stole yeah. half, And I did half not share. Box. Patty, would you like one? <laughs> you did not willingly oh, wait share. Why are the, ra- <laughs> right. why are the wrappers coming out of the box? Oh, no, no. <laughs> what, what is that? Did you do that? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I was in here early waiting on you. It was either <laughs> Jeff Vault or Jeff Pratt. One of the Jeffs. You want one? So that's why you kept delaying stole the start time for our podcast yes, today. Yes. No. <laughs> oh, five more minutes. I was finally eating lunch today. The door was locked and lights were on when I got down here. Yeah, enough food. <laughs> Is there All icing right. on your couch, Jeff? Maybe. <laughs> hey, First what about time? my opening video? That's pretty awesome. I could tell yeah. you came up with those jokes too, didn't you? No. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. You know I didn't. It was really funny, though. The way it was all clipped. You could tell, man, it was clipped together big time. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of edits done to that <laughs> Tons one. Tons of edits. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> You can always tell when, like, when you didn't write the joke, when you're laughing at the joke while you're telling the Mm -hmm. joke because you think it's funny too. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, first time with corn. Mmm, isn't that good? That is good. It's the icing and then the cream in the middle, like the combination of all that, and then the spongy uh, cake. Mm, Tastes just like it came out of Little Debbie's house. No, Little Debbie (laughs) is is like second class (laughs) to ho ho to. uh, those are hostess. fighting words, Jeff. To hostess. I know, because you guys are little Debbie so fans. I love little Debbie, too. Mm. Hostess fans. They're all good. That's good stuff. Um, So, false testimony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lying. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's there a good phrase go. for today's podcast. Uh, uh, Thanks, Jeff Vaught. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's awesome. Thanks, Jeff Vaught. That is awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so, yeah, great uh, next message that we are all guilty of. Uh, in the uh, Big Ten, this uh, this Ten sermon series has uh, turned out better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, low expectations. Jim. I was well, say, you, you know, think basic, it was just going to be basic, 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 basic expectations. Basic series. Patty's basic. got me so low on the scale now. I'm like, <laughs> this is going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was going to be a basic series, and it ended up being pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, it's just it's been fun to dig into the law. You know, it just yeah, and realize 
yeah, we're we're guilty. I wonder. If- this this is one though. I want you to hear me chewing. In the I know that's, I was kind of like got got out of the microphone when I was chewing my zinger. <laughs> this is the one big time that people try to weasel out of. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, we just do, man, because we want we got to find the crack, man. There's got to be a crack in the law somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, like the others are are kind of pretty cut and dry, mm-hmm. right? You know, even though we dug a little deeper in them. This one, man, like this one's definitely like you got find the you got to find the crack, man. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. So it, well, I think we're having a good conversation, especially all around the questions. We have, a, yeah. I think people are able to ask questions based yeah. on the the questions mm-hmm. we all have about a topic like this, right? Yeah, I was going to say, and this one because uh, it, like, if you take it just on, obviously the the commandment is don't give false testimony, which a large part of that is lying, right? Um, so just getting into the specifics of that, I think at the end of the day, we've probably all like you don't have to take this another level to make us guilty of it. We're all no. probably guilty of this one at some point. I do think it's fair though, and people laughed. Like people laughed when I talk about the difference between objective truth and subjective opinion. Yeah, like it's an excuse. Like I just created an excuse. <laughs> yeah, but but there really is a difference between. Because I really believe what the scripture speaks to is us responding to absolute truth. And an opinion is not absolute. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. do I like your hat? Well, it's an opinion. Mm -hmm. That's not absolute truth. Or if you ask me the question, do I look good in my hat? Well, if I don't like your hat, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean you don't look good in your hat. That just means I feel like my opinion is you don't, that's subjective. That is not objective. That's a great way to cop out of it too. If you give an, I feel like, but see, but see, that, but, see that, but that's what people want to say. All this is a cop out. Yeah. Well, tell me the truth. Well, I am telling you the truth. Yeah. Then you say, wait a minute. Then. So the, are you saying then that truth can be subjective? No, that's opinion. That's not truth. Cause that's where you got to be careful because obje- truth is objective, right? There's right. And there's wrong. Yeah. Period. Opinion is subjective. Yep. Because my opinion of something, I like Hostess better than Little Debbie. <laughs> Your opinion is you like Little Debbie better than Hostess. That's not objective. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. okay, yeah, you say you have a little de- a, a zinger and you have a Little Debbie Swiss roll. Mm. Which so which one's better? So I say the zinger is better than the uh, Swiss roll. Yeah. Well, that's not objective. That's subjective, because that's based on my opinion of how what how that tastes to me. Right. Right. So for me to say, then well, for me to say, is the other one better than the other? And I didn't believe that. Well, that would be a lie. So, it, so you just got to be careful because that's a subjective opinion. Mm-hmm. That's not objective truth. Right. And so I think there are a lot of, a lot of areas, you know, we always use the illustration like I did Sunday morning when I talked about our wives asking us questions. Even when I asked Julia a question about, cause I do this almost every Sunday uh, or other times I go out of the house and my clothes don't match, <laughs> you know, Hey, how do I look? Oh, you look great. But here's what she always does. Here, here's when I always know um, if, if she has a question. If there's ever any hesitation, hmm. I know right then she's trying, to, <laughs> she's trying to formulate an answer in her mind. Right. So, like, for her, there's great, no, but then this whole gray area. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't even want to be in the gray area. Because yeah. if I'm in her gray area, then I probably need to change. Right? So, 100%. Bec- you know what I'm saying? Yeah. B- because it, it'll be, hey, does this go together? Mm, yeah, that's okay. You thought too long. Yeah, you thought too long. Yeah. Like, if you got to justify it in your mind, <laughs> when in doubt, leave it out. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, no, I'm out. Like, yeah. if you don't answer me to right then and there, then I know I need to go change. Put yeah. something else on. Don't wear red and purple, to, whatever, you know, I don't know. Just, not that I have that. But. Sometimes honesty can truly hurt. Yeah. But I mean, is so, so does that mean, does that mean if you're not being honest, you're telling a lie? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I right. would not think that you have a problem with being honest, even if it hurts. Yeah, be correct. <laughs> <laughs> even if you have to say, yeah, that was basic. I think for your question of <laughs> if if you're not being honest, is that a lie? I think that's the definition. That is of a lie, lie, right? I know, right? Yeah, I yeah. was waiting for someone. Patty said yeah, yeah so I'm glad. But. Well, I was just thinking, you know, when when Joey and I first got married, and we've been married many years. Um, How many again, years have y'all been married? Thirty. Okay, we're thirty eight. Yeah. And so, you know, just getting used to responses, communications, all the things, and. He was so proud one morning and came out, how do I look? And I'm like, try again. 
Nice. <laughs> See, that's good, though. Honestly, I think my response just could have been buffered a little bit. Yeah. Hun, yes. I would I would probably not pair those two together. See, so yeah. I've learned these things. Yes. but Oh, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, maybe, they, maybe your learning just goes to Joey, not to us. Maybe that's what it is. So awesome. he was just heartbroken that. He learned that navy and black don't go together. So listen to this. You'll love See, it. See, I still oh, think they no. do that. So I'll, don't I'll, do I'll argue it. with him there. Navy and black don't go together? I think it works. I do too. The combination on that the he context. had on did not work. What about gray and khaki? You usually don't like Now, if you've got khaki. like mm. black slacks on and a navy jacket. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. So Ooh. listen to this. This is hilarious. So when we first got married, like Julie's an unbelievable cook right now. Not so much when we first got married, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And so she would cook tuna fish casserole. Oh. Yeah. Or like she <laughs> likes to call it tuna casserole. First, my mom says tuna, C-H. Tuna. Just so you know. Does she add the fish to it, though? Tuna fish. It's tuna fish, right? <laughs> tuna. Tuna fish. <laughs> but Julie says you, you don't put fish on the end of it because you don't oh. say steak cow. That's true. Mm. Yeah. I, when you said tuna that, fish, I was, the hmm. tuna means it, like tuna is... It's tuna. Yeah, yeah, I agree with her there. Yeah. But if you make a sandwich out of it, it's tuna fish sandwich. You don't say a tuna sandwich. Mm. I don't eat it, so I, <laughs> I don't call do, it anything. Do you not eat tuna? <laughs> I mean, I would, but... Dude, tuna fish is amazing. If I had a choice of bologna and tuna, I'd take bologna. Yeah, that's good, right? So anyway, so <laughs> she would make... So to, be, so to be nice to her, she would make tuna casserole. Okay. And we would eat it. And then like, she's like, hey, how is it? Oh, man, it's great. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Tuna fish. Well, she just started making it a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and finally, like, and this has only been maybe like five years ago. We've been married 38 years. <laughs> I'm like, all right, so let me, let, let me taste nothing. Like, you don't ever have to make tuna fish casserole again, ever. <laughs> you mean you don't like it? Uh, Not really. Why did you tell me all those years you liked mm. it? All right, so was I lying to her? Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's subjective opinion. That's not absolute truth. Objective opinion. That's subject. It's subjective opinion. I mean, it's tuna <laughs> fish casserole good. If you didn't like good. it and you said you did, you lied. But I like, oh, so you know what? So this is going to get into what, this is going to get into one of the theories we're going to talk about in just a minute that a lot of people use to justify yeah. lies. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah. See, so yeah, along those lines, uh, and we'll get into like most of the question uh, questions and really the, the message was kind of specific to lying. Um, d- when we talk about, uh, again, false testimony, uh, kind of what are, are there, is it just lying? Is it specific to just that? Or are there any other levels? Well, and before, before you answer that, I will, uh, I meant to say when you're talking about objective truth and subjective, I guess I can bring this up later, but, um, I think what kind of defines that in that category, um, and you, you made it, uh, you, you said it correctly there when we were talking in service planning, I think someone mentioned objective truth and subjective truth. Right. And so I think that's the determining factor there of like, yeah objective truth truth is truth only it's truth can, only truth can be objective but when it's subjective that's when it comes to the objective. That's exactly but anyways right. yeah false testimony are there any other um areas that would be classified under that well what is interesting is is that when you first like the, the if you look at the command and its intended application yeah it really was built around the, ju- the judicial system that god was putting in place for the israelites okay and so you know his his the, the the system was that anything that anyone would be accused of had to be verified by at least two to three witnesses mm. so that somebody couldn't be brought up on a false charge. You know, it was really protecting the innocent is what it yeah. was. So the command is don't bear false witness. Mm-hmm. Don't bear false testimony. That's why the word testimony is actually used. Okay. So don't be a, don't be a witness or don't bear a, a testimony against someone that's not true because, you know, you come up and say, well, I saw Cameron do this. Okay, are there any other witnesses? You know, God's plan was it's got to be verified by two to three witnesses. Yeah. And so if you can't verify that, then Deuteronomy said the law was is that is that then if I did that to you, then they, they will go and investigate. The, the priest will go and investigate that. And if they can't find any, any other witness that would verify that, then whatever your punishment would have been, now that punishment comes to me. Mm-hmm. So if it was something, you know, if I, if I said you had committed adultery, let's say, and nobody could verify that, well, uh, the punishment for adultery was death. Mm-hmm. So I would have died because of that. Wow. That's how serious it was. And that's where he said, purge the evil from among you. 
Mm. Right. You can't, you can't play with it. You can't let it stay around. Yeah. You got to purge the evil. And so, mm. so the original con the context was in the context of that judicial system that God was putting in place. But the, the principle though is obviously tell the truth, mm -hmm. right? You know, don't, yeah. don't, don't tell a lie and don't, don't spread that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When it gets into, um, and I don't, I don't think any of the questions went here, but, uh, but could you take that as far as like when it gets to rumors and mm -hmm. even like flattery just for the sake of, you know, it, it, you may, and it could be subjective things, but just flattering for kind of a manipulation mm -hmm. purpose mm -hmm. would, would those type things fall under the, the false testimony? Yeah. Thing as well? I, and I, well, I think it can, I, I think obviously intent always comes into play there, right? but you know, I think that gets into the subjective realm, mm -hmm. right? More than the objective realm. So you kind of, you really have to look at, you know, what are those things that we know are objective truth? And, you know, like I, we use the illustration because this is what our culture is doing today. You know, I was born a male. That is objective truth. Right. I feel like a female today. That's Should subjective. Not twine. That's, it. Bing, bing. That's subjective <laughs> opinion, right? So, so the world has taken subjective opinion and made it objective truth. Mm -hmm. So because I feel that way, then that becomes my truth. Yeah. Well, that now I'm forcing you to respond to me based on what, I, what I've called subjective truth, mm. right? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at you objectively, and I know what you are, but subjectively you're telling me you're something else. Right. And, you're, and you're wanting me to respond to you based on your subjective truth instead of me responding to you based on what I know is objective, mm -hmm. right? Just like in our school systems, we have kids right now, we're responding to students who think they're animals, Okay, I, I, it's furries or furbies. It's got a word. I don't know what the word yeah. is, but it's got a word. And you take you, you take a student, and you, like you have parents who are expecting school systems to respond to these children and actually provide litter boxes and 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 bathrooms and things of this nature. Okay, you're forcing me to respond to your subjective what your subjective opinion that you turned into subjective truth. Now you're wanting me to make that objective. Mm -hmm. You can't make subjective truth objective, right? And then force me to respond to that. Yeah. Because I'm going to respond to you in objective truth. You are not a cat. Mm. Well, you're forcing me to respond to you in the fact that you are. So see, so that, that's how it, that's how it can get really mixed up, man. And, and we've got to separate and see clearly, man, this is objective truth. And that's what we're to respond to. Yeah. Truthfully. Right. Yeah. So where does failure to speak up when you know something is wrong? Well, Where yeah, that yeah, that was kind of the whole point of the last mm -hmm. point, you know, and, and I think when we, when um, Abraham had his issues really twice, I mm -hmm. mean, two great stories, one with uh, the Pharaoh in Egypt and, and one with King yeah. Abimelech, um, both of those came back to Abraham and said, why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. Like, like, why didn't you tell me this was your wife, mm -hmm. man? Like, why would you bring pain and suffering onto me? Yeah. You know, so this idea of, man, if, if you know the truth and you don't tell the truth, now here, here's here's the difficulty. So let's let's apply that to our culture. Um, so you know, and and this gets into a lot of man arguments and discussions and conversations. Is that do we have the right to correct sub subjective opinion when it's when it's being used mm -hmm. as objective truth? Mm -hmm. Right. So so where you know where and and that's that's the tension of our culture right now. It is, well, in yeah. that commandment, the, the the negative implies the positive. Right. It if almost you are it. not right bearing fault, if you know if we're commanded not to bear false witness, right, that means we are bearing truth. Be, mm -hmm. Yeah, be a truth teller, right? Now, so agreed, but in love, mm -hmm. in the right context, and in the right time, mm -hmm. and for the right reason. And I think that's really important because if I'm going to be a truth teller, then I've got to I've got to love. And here's the hard thing: I think it's hard, but some people struggle with this. Some people love truth more than they love people. Mm. Mm. Okay, so think yeah. about that. So if I love truth more than I love people, now you may go, well, wait a minute, Jesus is truth, so we're supposed to love Jesus more. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who who want to push. It's, it's even hard to even talk about it, man, because if I say push truth for the sake of truth, well, we should be pushing for the sake of truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jesus always says, man, speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. Speak the truth in love. So if I'm coming to you with hard truth, I better be coming to you with love in my heart for you. Genuine concern for you. I really want you to change, man. I really want you. So, so 
like if I look at somebody who who does not know Christ and and, and never claims to know Christ, well, I talked about this Sunday morning. Man, your problem is not to help you understand. Now, I'm not making a generalization here that everybody who feels this way doesn't know. So, so please don't don't. Let's just let's. So I'll just keep it general. Person A has a problem. My my concern, and I know you're not a believer in Christ. You you. So my issue is not to help you believe differently about your problem. Right. My issue is to help you see Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like my now he, now if you if I love if I love my object, objectivity more than I love you, I'm going to try to convince you that you're not what you think you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I love you more than I love my objectivity or me being right, then I'm going to tell you about Christ because mm-hmm. I want your life to change so that when your nature changes and your life changes, the view of who you are changes. Right. And when that happens, mm-hmm. then now I, you can, the Holy Spirit can start pursuing, conforming you into the image of Jesus, and yeah. then now your life starts changing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know it's kind of hard to explain, but without being confusing, but so many times people are truth tellers because they want to be right. Mm-hmm. And I got to love, we got to love people more than we love us being right. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm going to, I'm going to harp at you and, and yell at you and get on to you because I am right. No, I want to share the love of Christ with you because I love you. Yeah. And I don't want to see you die and go to hell. And I want you and I want your life here to matter. And I don't want you to struggle with stuff that you're struggling with and searching for identity and all these mm-hmm. types of things. Man, I want you to know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need to be right there. Yep. Right? I, I want you to know who Jesus is. Yeah. And so I've seen a ton of people that are behavior correctors based on objective truth, mm-hmm. but they're not getting to the heart of the matter. Right. And I think that's that's yeah. a that's a big issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as we get into some of these questions again, just uh, very kind of practical of what this looks like in our lives. Uh, the first one, and you kind of brought this up a little bit in the message with um, with Rahab uh, yep. the, and that the story of that. And you could even get into some other things with this. But they asked, is it okay to lie to protect others? Mm-hmm. For example, people who are being tortured for information but they say they don't know anything, but they're lying and saying that. Or you could even take it to uh, the Holocaust with the mm-hmm. Underground Railroad, um, any of those, and Frank, you know, um, is lying in those situations, uh, how, is is it okay to lie in those situations to protect Don't be mentioning Corey Tim Boom. Yep. Don't be getting on Corey. <laughs> Can we mention Corey? Yep. Well, no, I think I think that's what everybody, you know, a lot of people want to bring up. So, so here's a question you got to consider. Will God ever ask you to sin – to obey him? I would think no, because that would be asking you to, did you ask, would he ask us to sin or to lie? You said to sin. It isn't, isn't right. It, isn't it one of the same? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, so if lying I, yeah. is a sin, then he's asking so us to sin. So I said, would sin, God ever ask you to sin yeah. to be in obedience? I don't think so. Because there's no evil in God. There's no sin. There's no yeah. So the answer to that's no. There's no, no absolutely not. There's yeah. no way that we were ever we would ever be asked to sin to commit a sin to be in obedience. Right. Okay. So that's the that's the high level objective truth principle. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting is that I started digging into this issue of Rahab, and I and I've heard this before. I remember it in seminary, but I'd kind of forgotten. So I kind of refreshing my mind on. And how do different? What are different trains of thought when it comes to the situation? Mm-hmm. So I actually found two that were really that were really. It's kind of funny because th- this was kind of my world in the seminary. So my world in the seminary was um, like we like one of my favorite classes with eth- was ethics class, mm-hmm. and so I would I would be this probably wouldn't surprise you guys, and I may have told you guys this, but I would be the punk in the back, uh, man, just been saved maybe a year, year and a half, and they would bring up these ethical dilemmas. And that was always my favorite part of seminary because we'd have these ethical dilemma conversations. Yeah. And you've got the situation where, uh, you know, your family's starving, holo- wars happen, whatever. The only way for you to go and feed your family is to steal. Is that right? Mm. I'd be like, nope. <laughs> you want to explain it? Yeah. Stealing's a sin. And I just said, dude, and these guys would just start arguing. And, <laughs> you don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. And they'd have all these f- philosophies and principles and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And these, you know, philosophical, ethical conversations. I'm like, 
I don't know what y'all are talking about. I just know the Bible says you're not supposed to steal. So <laughs> there you go. You wow. know, yeah, I was that guy. Very basic. Just very basic. Very just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what more do you need to hear? Yep. Right. But so, so to all these guys' credit, he, he, here's a couple of ways that they would look at this. One guy, uh, one way to look at this is, and I, <laughs> I almost think this is funny, the principle of disclosure. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the principle of disclosure says that it's that Rahab didn't lie because they didn't disclose everything in their question. Mm. Okay, mm. so here's here's how this guy did this. And this guy was a seminary professor, a seminary yeah. president. So the principal disclosure says this. Uh, question to Rahab. Do you are you hiding Jews? No. Okay, Rahab didn't sin because they didn't disclose their intent. So the principle of disclosure, which mm. she knew what she knew what their intent was. So the principle of disclosure would say she didn't sin because their intent really was, the question really was, are you hiding Jews that we want to kill? Mm. Or that or that that we can kill? Mm-hmm. No. Because you can't kill Jews. So the principle of disclosure would say she didn't sin because she knew what their intent was. Mm-hmm. So it's either principle intent or mm-hmm. principle of disclosure. They didn't disclose their intent. So because of that, she didn't sin. I don't I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so so that yeah. would justify her action. Right. Okay. So you got the principle of disclosure. Then you've also got the the which to me that's situational ethic, mm-hmm. or you've got the principle of greater good. Mm-hmm. So there are times in our life where we have to choose the greater good. And the greater good in the situation of Rahab was the life of the Jews. And so because, so she chose the greater good. The greater good was that she would have to lie, so she would have to suffer her sinning, but the greater good was that she was protecting the Jews. Mm-hmm. So pro- to, to protect life, she lied. Mm. So the greater good, principle greater good, would say anytime there's a situation where there's greater good, here's the problem with what I have with, with the greater good principle. That's subjective. Yeah. Mm. Because now you put it in my hands to determine when is the greater good. Right. And so if we but if we say the greater good is always to protect life. All right. So they would have this conversation in ethics class and they would say, Well, let's, let's just, so just take thou shalt not kill. And we talked about murdering and protecting families and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Well, the reality is there was never anything never anything was nothing was ever supposed to be killed in God's world. Until sin came into the world, right? Because I kill somebody, doesn't make it right. Because I kill somebody to protect my family, doesn't make it right. right. It's just that I'm doing that because that's what I'm going to do in a lost, mm-hmm. fallen, broken world, right? Lying because I'm protecting the greater good doesn't make lying right. Like you can't take, and this is this is the area where we want to take God's commands and find the crack in the wall mm-hmm. that gives us that little glimpse to say. Who? That's why I can do that. Yeah. Now, so what one writer said, and I agree with this, is that because you go to Hebrews eleven, and there's Rahab. Mm-hmm. How's Rahab in, he, mm-hmm. in Hebrews eleven? She's she lied. Yeah. Well, God didn't honor her lie. God honored her faith. Mm-hmm. Her faith was that she trusted God, and he she did what he asked her to do. Yeah. He never asked her to lie about it. Now, would God have delivered them in a different way had she not lied? Absolutely. If it was God's sovereign will and his sovereign plan, then, then they would have been delivered. Mm-hmm. She was the one who chose to take action in that. Yeah. So God didn't honor her lie. God honored her faith. Mm. And so to answer the question, no. There, there, we, we, can't, we can't say there's ever a right time to tell a lie. Mm. And that's hard because we always want to go to situations, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now, when we go to situations, we create we start creating situational ethic. Mm-hmm. And so when we start creating a situational ethic, where does, or even a consequential ethic, where does that line end and who's determining if that's subjective or objective? Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. so so then is it okay to lie for these three things or these four things? You know what I'm saying? And all the, and that line becomes so subjective when yeah. in God's law, it's never right to tell a lie. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. That kind of goes. There's um, a couple others that could kind of be wrapped into that same category, um, but not as like, obviously this one is a, a 
to protect someone is typically a pretty distinct, like these examples we're giving, like, is there someone in here? If they are, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to say no and lie to protect these people. Right. Some of these other ones talking about little light white lies or even um, lies to protect someone's feelings. Um, so the the uh, examples they gave, little white lies, untruths that are insignificant and not harmful to anyone. For example, if I say I'm looking forward to attending an event with someone, but actually dreading or not or planning to back out altogether. And then the uh, protecting someone's feelings, like if a hostess asked you how the meal was that she is prepared, or a uh, hostess makes it sound like it's a restaurant, just going to someone's house. Mm-hmm. And uh, Julie's mm. tuna fish casserole salad salad mm. casserole casserole yeah tuna um, mm. tuna tuna fish tuna uh, <laughs> tuna fish <laughs> if they ask you how you like it and it's it's truly horrible they said if it's truly horrible not saying Julie's is yeah but I tell her it's wonderful so her feelings won't be hurt are those really considered lies and is that um, does that fall into this as well yeah and and I, th- I you know I think I would kind of throw those types of things in the area subjective. You know, it's it's hard because like I can I can I can make subjective opinion objective truth. Mm-hmm. I eat something I don't like it. Something that something that Julie has said and and, I, and it's and it's true. Um, just because something is right doesn't always mean it needs to be said. Mm. Because sometimes we need to just understand that that we need to be silent sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. And, you know, if, if I come to your house and Taylor cooks something and, you know, because people could say, okay, this is a principle of greater good. My love for Taylor is greater than how I feel about this casserole. So I'm going to say because of my love for her as a sister in Christ, listen, man, now there may be a way I say it, you know, Man, you did a great job on this meal tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, you got, you know, man, you just got, you just, it's, it's so, it gets so gray because mm-hmm. you got to be careful with that, right? Because, yeah. you know, my opinion is you did, you did a super job with this tonight. Well, how did you like the casserole? Honestly, not my favorite, but I'm telling you, I really appreciate what you did. You did a mm-hmm. super job on the meal tonight. Yeah. Like, I think there's a tactful way yeah. for us to say those things. And I think we have to be careful because if we start justifying not being truthful, then I think it bleeds over into other areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Because I, I, I think that's where, like, you've got to be careful with the principle of subjective opinion because it, it because our flesh loves that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, man, there's my crack in the mm-hmm. wall, yeah. you know. And now all of a sudden I start making things subjective that should be objective. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, like, if Taylor looks at me, and I don't, uh, Taylor's a great cook, I'm sure. But if, you know, Taylor says to me, hey, how did you like the meal? Man, you did a great job on the meal tonight. Thank you. And it and it ends at that. Yeah. Because I appreciate the effort yeah. and the yeah. invite, the hospitality, all of those things. You know, our relationship, like all those things are great. But if she specifically looks at me and said, yeah, but I, did you like the casserole? Now I got to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, like for me, and I can frame it in that, for me, it, that's not my favorite. Yeah. But, but everything, man, everything else is awesome. You did a great job with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I just feel like, I feel like I need to be honest there. Yeah. You know, and because it's just, it's just not like, you know, there's certain ones that I just don't like and others I like better. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. Like everybody's different. Yeah. And you would even say, well, that's even subjective, you know, because there's not a rule out there that says, Everybody should love broccoli casserole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not everybody likes broccoli casserole. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of people do, you know, uh, there's God's laws that are objective. So it doesn't matter if you like it or not, it's God's law, Mm -hmm. you know? So I I just, I think that's where it gets tough. I mean, I I really, I I think this commandment comes down to the intent of the heart. Yeah. You, You mentioned manipulation a minute ago, Cameron. And so I think this is the one where we've got to be careful that we we can use lies to get the things we want. And that's where it, it, things that are subjective can become objective really quickly mm-hmm. because the intent of my heart is evil. Yeah. So if the intent of my heart is evil, then, man, like that's between God and me, right? That, that's not nobody's objective standard out here that they've got written out. Yep. Like the intent of the heart is really what you have to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
And that was I, when when you said out of, out of my love for Taylor, you know, I'm gonna you know frame it in a certain way, whatever. That you made a good point that the, even that can be that slippery slope that yeah. our flesh wants to get off. All right, now I got to find the holes where I can yeah. say certain things in a certain way, or you kind of find your little um, your way of phrasing things. Um, so, but, but, but somebody, but, but take it this. Uh-huh. So I'm going to be the obnoxious truth, truth guy. Yeah. And we're just all sitting there eating a meal. And I just say, man, this is really not very good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just keep going like what, where'd that come from? Yeah. You know, and that's where Julie would say, Hey, because something's right. Doesn't mean it always needs yeah. to be said. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, I think like the context that would be true. Yeah. Now, why would I do that? Because I want everybody to know how I feel about something. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. about me. You know, so the, the obnoxious truth teller mm-hmm. can be that person who just wants to be puffed up and I know everything and I'm, I'm the truthful person around mm-hmm. the table right. because, hey, I can recognize that and I'm going to make sure you know that I do. Right. And I mean, there's even some people who just personality wise just like to argue. There's mm-hmm. people who yes. just like to debate. And so yes. it could just be that's kind of that fleshly thing for them. They're like, Okay, here's my area that I can at least debate on. As long as I know I'm fighting for truth, I can say whatever right. I want to say. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's tough. But where, so where's the line even of that, of, you know, just because it's true doesn't mean it has to be said. Where's the line uh, to, to kind of distinguish of when it's maybe that situation versus a sin of omission like you hit at, mm-hmm. the, end of, at the end of the message? Yeah, so I think I would, so I, I would take in that, I would take uh, the great commandment. Love the Lord your God, thought of your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbors yourself. Yeah. So anytime that I violate those relationships, then then I've sinned against God. Mm-hmm. Because we have to take sin in the context, really post, post-crucifixion, resurrection, mm-hmm. Jesus fulfilled the law, paid the price for the law. We're not bound to the law anymore. So, so we're not bound to the obedience of the mm-hmm. commands. We're bound to the great commandment, mm-hmm. right? Those are the two commandments that we're bound by. Still looking to the law for instruction and things of that nature. So in my context, I've got to look at, for example, and this isn't making it um, situational, but in the context of, again, does it violate my relationship with Christ or does it violate my relationship with my neighbor? Mm. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I may know something is true, but if I'm saying it just to hurt you, Mm. then I'm sinning against God Mm. because now my truth becomes hurtful. Right. You know, and so, so am I speaking it in love or am I speaking it out of arrogance and pride and yeah. wanting you to know that I know truth. Yeah. And I think yeah. that, that, I think that's where the balance yeah. is because it has to, it has to move from, cause that's what Jesus did. He went from the letter of the law to the spirit of the law. Right. And so we've got to move from, from just objective truth to relational to, mm-hmm. to relationship. So how can I let truth help, help shape the relationships that God has called me to be a part of, to love him with all of my heart, soul and strength, to love his law, to love his word, to love his truth. And to love my neighbor as myself. So I'm going to love my neighbor in a way that I want to make sure they know truth. Now, there are sometimes you have to share hard truth. You know, um, I, I don't know if I did this in the 10 o'clock service, but in the I know in the 1115 service, I talked about this, where over the weekend, Graham was with us and a 15-month-old grandson just stole, has stolen my heart. I mean, just ridiculously. <laughs> it's just crazy. And... But it was late at night. It was Friday night. Alec was at a football game. Um, Whitney was working, so Graham was with us. It was seven thirty late. You know, he's he's normally in bed by six. Yeah. So he's kind of grumpy, and and we had made the mistake earlier of laughing at him when he swatted at Braylon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the little thing. So all yeah. of a sudden, at uh, you know seven o'clock, Julie's sitting on the floor. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> dude! And Graham goes over there, and he's just like pow, pow, just swatting Julie in the head. And Julie's sitting there, like taking it, going, "Oh, Jeff, what's going on? What are you doing?" I'm like, Julie, he's 18 months old. Like, grab, like, stop yeah. him. You know, she's like mm-hmm. wanting me to come over and get him. You know, I think she was just kind of shocked. You know, and so I said, Graham, Graham, no, 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 but no, we don't do that, buddy. Well, he, but he was looking for that laugh, mm-hmm. that response. Yeah. Okay, so so now I've got to correct him. I've got to, yeah. because truth is, we don't do that. Yeah. Right. So do you just let it go or do you correct it? So I said, no, Graham, we don't do that. He looked at me and he went to do it again and mm-hmm. I grabbed his arm and I held on to it. I said, no, we don't do that. And he looked at me and I mean, his eyes are starting to water, dude. And my eyes are starting to, man, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, and I let it go of his arm and he went to do it again and I grabbed his arm again. I said, mm-hmm. no, sir, 
we do not mm-hmm. do that. And he put his arm down. And I thought, you know, as painful as that was, that's when you have to speak truth. Yeah. Yep. Because if you don't speak truth in the life of kids, because they don't, they, they don't have a, a redeemed nature that can deal with that at mm-hmm. that point. You have to train them. And so that's a part of training. And so you refuse to do that because you love then what you're dealing, what you're going to create is a monster. Yeah. Yep. You know, the proverb said, open rebuke is better than silent love. Right. So that's a time where I'm going to speak truth because I love you. And I see you going down a destructive path. I'm going to speak truth into your life. I'm mm. not going to lie to you. Mm. Right. You know, and, and again, that's where I see you going down a destructive path, man. Well, because I really love you, man, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. Or I'm not going to speak truth. Not say anything at all. Yeah. You know, not saying anything at all. And the Bible says, no, no, no. Open rebuke is better than silent love. Mm-hmm. Like you speak the truth, but speak it in love. Speak it in the, in the form of redemption and reconciliation. I've always say this. If you are speaking to somebody and you have to speak hard truth to somebody, if you don't have a heart of reconciliation and redemption, don't go. Mm-hmm. Don't go because you're going for yourself. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to notch your gun belt. Look what I did. Look what mm-hmm. I changed. Look what I accomplished. Yeah. Man, if you don't love that person, if it doesn't break your heart to go, speak truth into them, don't go. Yeah. Don't go until your heart's broken. Mm. Like once that happens, now you know you're doing it for the right reason. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you brought up parenting. This can go down a whole – we could do a whole other podcast just on this yeah. parenting. Because you've talked about um, just the different phases. I think you. I think it was you that talked about mm-hmm. it. Different phases of parenting with coaching and yep. counseling. and uh, But the behavior modification of those early mm-hmm. years of, mm-hmm. man, we're dealing with that hard with ours with a two- and a four-year-old. Um, but, yeah, I mean – that where when they learn what truth is and what truth isn't yeah. like is when they're little. So there has to be a hard line of yes and no. Yeah. Let me, um, let me tell you this. And I've learned this and I may have said this before, but I'll, I'll say it again is that there's a reason why God put the law in place first before grace came. Yeah. You got to have law before you can have grace. Mm-hmm. If you put grace first and try to put law in, Second, it never works. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're going to look at you and laugh. Because if you've been graceful and you've and you've not trained your kids and now they're 16 and you look at them and say, hey, be home at 11, they're going to look at you and go, yeah, that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not happening. Yep. Because you don't put law after grace. Yep. Law has to come first. So that means we have to train and we have to put the law into them. You know, the, the four patterns of parenting you mentioned, Cameron, caretaker, cop, Coach, consultant, mm-hmm. right? From from zero to six, we're caretakers. We're doing everything for them. From six to twelve, we're we're cops. We're enforcing the law. We're yeah. putting the law into them. We're we're enforcing the law. Hopefully, from twelve to eighteen, we're coaching them and what we've taught them. And from eighteen on, we're consulting. Yeah. You know, we're we're helping them make decisions. Yeah. Right? Where we fail when we fail in those areas, and and, and it's very law heavy. You know, in those first 12 years, yeah, it has to be law heavy. And all of a sudden from 12 to 18, you start introducing grace. You start letting them make decisions. You start helping them understand because you're coaching. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what a coach does. I mean, he trains you. And then he puts you out on the mat and lets you wrestle. Yeah. Then he comes back and he says, you know, but if I hadn't coached you, you don't know what to do when you get out there. Right. And then 18 and on now, now we are able to move into the consulting role. Mm-hmm. Right, where we're just, hey, I got life situations going on. Based on what you've taught me, Dad, here's what I'm thinking. Is that right? Yeah. You know, now if we miss those spots, if we miss those phases, if it's just, if, because here's what we want to do we want to be friend, 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 buddy, pal. Mm. And then all of a sudden, when they get 16 and 17, well, all of a sudden we want to be a cop. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't. No. Do that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That don't work. Mm. Because if you've not instilled law in their life early, then it ain't going to work. So, right. and our flesh needs that. Like, as yeah. my, I'm telling you, you're, you you know, you need it. Yeah. Because if you don't, flesh will always take advantage of grace. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so kind of taking this into the next question, uh, really kind of goes more on the, in a way, in the rumor side of things. But they asked, if someone lies mm-hmm. to us, uh, but per- portrays it as a truth and we spread it, what's the punishment for that? So like I like we were talking about before with the false testimony idea, I uh, mentioned rumors as part of that. Would this fall under that as like a, uh, you know, if someone tells us something, we haven't verified if it's true or not, and we just go mm-hmm. and spread it, are we essentially guilty of lying at that point? Yeah, so a couple things I think that are 
that are interesting about the question. One is punishment. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got to understand as Christians that we are not punished for our sin. Yeah. Jesus Christ was punished for our sin. We're never punished for our sin. We could, we should never use the word punishment when we talk about Christ and our sin. Yeah. Because if we say that, then we're saying he was not punished enough. And if our sin wasn't punished, I mean, the one thing that Jesus Christ came and did for us that the blood of goats and bulls and animals couldn't do in the Old Testament was that they could not be punished for sin. Jesus came and he was punished for our sin, mm. which then made it allowable to, to be forgiven. So when we use the word punished, we're saying that Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection was insufficient. Mm. So we got to be careful with our language. And I know that's semantics for a lot of people, but it's important. It's an important word. You know, yeah, words are sure. important. So, we, so let's talk about discipline. You know, how, how are we going to be disciplined for that? You know, what, what does that what does that look like? So we are disciplined as believers in Christ, and I think that's a part of, of our coaching phase that we're in with with Christ and our in our conforming phase into His nature. So the problem with the question is not in the fact that somebody lied to them, yeah, but that they spread it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the, that's what what, and I, I'm not I'm not pointing my finger to this person, but yeah. in this situation. What needs to be concerning is that you felt the need to share that with someone else. Mm -hmm. That's listen. That's where it had, because to that person has that story been confirmed by two or more people. Mm. Okay. Well, all right, number one, if it had, if it has not, then you don't have any right to say anything about it. Right. If it has been confirmed then what are you going to do going back to the original person to help them understand through reconciliation and redemption? How are you going to speak truth into their life? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? So like I haven't, there's nowhere anywhere where a believer has the right to spread something about someone else, whether it's true or not. Yeah. Like you just don't, you just, we don't have the, cause that's just gossip. That's slander. Yeah. That's character assassination. I mean, there's so many, so many wrong things about that. And will and will Christ discipline us for that? He absolutely will. Yeah, because it's just not it's just not a part of our Christian character. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, number one, we should never, you know, share anything about someone that we, and I don't even want to say that that we don't know is true or not. Because even if it's true, you have no reason sharing it with someone else. Right. Even in the form of a prayer request, <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. Hey, this is a prayer request. You know. Yeah. So so we got to be careful with that. And I think a second thing is. Man, if, if, if you know, you know, something has happened or, or, you know, something is true in someone's life, do you love them enough or you're in a relational position enough to go speak to that person mm -hmm. about that? Right. You know, man, wouldn't it be great if, if somebody came to us and said, hey, man, let me, let, man, let me tell you what I heard about so-and-so. Mm -hmm. First, we just stopped and said, you know what, L let, me, let me stop you right there. Because number one, if you have heard something about so-and-so and it's not been confirmed by two to three witnesses, then, then that's bearing false testimony. Mm. So we probably shouldn't be having this conversation. Mm. Number two, if it is true, then I'm hoping you're going to share with me your plan to go confront that person in love and help mm. them get back on track with the Lord. Because if you're not, then you don't need to be talking to me about that. Mm. So like, just, yeah, go ahead. You know, I mean, like that would, like, what would our world be like if we would be willing to be people like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to make sure, uh, you, know, you know, this was obviously no one, no one put the, their name on this. So I took it kind of the rumor route because that's how I read it. Just in case they were thinking in a d different direction, yeah. uh, setting aside rumor, but say it's just a simple like, hey, I heard, uh, or not even I heard, like making it a truth of, hey, Burger King's closing next week. Something yeah. that's not necessarily, maybe that could be considered a rumor, but just a, a truth of, I don't know. Uh, did you know that that chair is made out of goat skin? Yeah. Like just something simple that mm. it's not about somebody doesn't really affect anybody. But then you go, Hey, I heard this is true. Like, yeah. is, is there any, uh, you know, just in case that that's part of this question, is there yeah. any, any, uh, guidance or any answer in that? Well, um, I think, yeah. I mean, I, I think again, you got to think about, and, and this, this almost makes it subjective because, you know, if somebody says to me, Hey, I hear we're getting a Starbucks on the West side of town. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And I go tell 10 people. Man, guess what, guys? We're getting a Starbucks. Have we got a Starbucks? Starbucks. Well, can I find out we're not? Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. 
Like I don't, I don't feel like, yeah. you know, that I've been let down or maybe that person got wrong information. I mean, right. sometimes you see a building go up, it looks like something, the intent, yeah, see, it goes back, goes to, back intent, to the intent, sure. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but if somebody, what if somebody says, uh, Hey, I hear Cameron's going to another church. Really? Do you know where? No, I just, I just, he's been out of town a lot. So I think he's going to another church. Okay. Then they tell somebody else, they tell somebody else. Well, what's the intent of that? Yeah. Like what, 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 number one, what business is it of that person's? Yep. And so you may say, well, you know, there's a church member and the what, okay, fine. If you're really concerned about that, call Cameron. Mm-hmm. That, see, that's to me, like anytime somebody comes to me yep. and says something to me about someone else, I will immediately go, you know what? That's awesome. If you don't mind, let's, go, let's call that person <laughs> right now and let's see if that's true. Yeah. I'll never forget. I had a church member do that here one time and uh, they called me up and said that a staff member had said something. And I said, man, I said, do you mind if I get that person in the room and we have a conversation? Yeah. No, that'd be great. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the church member was right. Yeah. You know, so it kind of called the staff member in Mm -hmm. on, on question. Yeah. Which is okay too, because you know what? Don't be, don't be saying stuff. That's Mm -hmm. not right. Yeah. And so there, there were the three of us. We had a church member on the telephone and I'm saying, okay, so you're telling me this person said this, and I have this person in the room. He said, yep, repeat that. And I looked at the staff member and said, so did you say that? I said, no, because he's saying you did. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but that's not really what I meant. Okay. All right. So <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So yeah. we have to be careful what we say. Yeah. And then, so, so anyway, I, I just think that's, that's not being obnoxious. I hope, but, but that's just like, get to the truth, yeah. yep. go to the source, deal with it. And, because you just you just don't we can't put up with false testimony, right? Like you just can't do that. Yeah. Yep. And we can't be ones who find ourselves sharing those things. If you don't know something is true, n- number one, you probably shouldn't be sharing it anyway. Regardless, number yeah. two, definitely if you don't know if it's true, really have any no business sharing it if it's not redemptive or kind of you know baked in reconciliation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good. We'd be in a much healthier. To answer your first question, we'd be in a much healthier place. If, yes, if we did that. absolutely. Um, the last one uh, really just gets in. It, we talked about it a little on the front end, but um, really just makes a lot of just the world that we live in gets really practical in that realm. But they ask, how do you lovingly have conversations with those who oppose you or your beliefs? Uh, they, they said specifically politically, especially Christians seemingly following subjective opinions in the culture versus objective truths being mm-hmm. biblical. Um, so yeah, that gets right down to the to the nitty gritty of it in the world that we live in. But how do we lovingly have those conversations with people who oppose us and our beliefs? Yeah, you know, I, I think that comes down to um, what do I love more, mm-hmm. and my intent, and what am I trying to accomplish? Yeah. Okay. So, um, for example, let's just let's just take the political scene. So you know, there are a couple people in our church that feel like I should be telling people to all vote a certain way Mm -hmm. because a certain candidate seems to have more Christian based values than another one does. So surely I should be the guy telling everybody to vote that way. And so, you know, I, I think, I think the people that say that are genuine, like Mm -hmm. they truly believe that. And they just feel like that should be done. I don't, I don't feel like that's my right of responsibility to do that. Right. Cause I think that's everybody's individual choice. I always say, man, vote your convictions and make sure those convictions are based on Scripture. Mm. So that kind of gets to that. Yeah. I mean, you know, as believers, that's what we're responsible to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so it's not really my job to convince somebody who is a Democrat to be a Republican or who's a Republican to be a Democrat, like all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. Paul says in Timothy that a good soldier doesn't get involved in the affairs of the world. I vote, I participate, I do everything that I've been given the right, God-given right to do. But man, I'm not. I'm not really concerned if somebody's a, a Republican or Democrat. I'm concerned if they're saved or they're not mm-hmm. saved. Yeah. Are they being discipled? You know, those are the things that we've been called to do. Yeah. Now, am I man? Am I excited about where we are as a, as a country? Absolutely. Am I excited about the direction of our country? You know, absolutely. We'll see. But everything seems to be pointing in a direction to where that, you know, most conservative people would say, man, this is a great direction. So yeah. we'll see. But you know what? At the end of the day, Jesus is still the king. He's still on the throne. Like my political leader hasn't changed. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. he's not elected every four years. Yeah. Right. He, he, the father put him on the throne and that's where he's at the right, actually at the right hand of his father right now, which is a, a place of authority. 
And so I'm not worried about who's on the throne mm-hmm. of who I answer to. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but man, we do what we do. So, so I would say, and, and I think this is where the principle that Jesus talks about really comes into play. Jesus would say this. He said, don't cast your pearl before the swine. Okay, so what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that mean when Jesus said, don't cast your pearl before the swine? So you're yeah. wanting an answer. Where's the cricket button? Do, do, do. <laughs> you wouldn't hear it anyway. Yeah. So. Are you waiting for a zinger? <laughs> yeah. Sure, you, you would not hear it. Somebody want a zinger? I'm assuming don't throw your nice yes. stuff before the nasty pigs. That's a literal interpretation. Yeah, I'm just going for the. <laughs> don't throw nice jewelry to the pigs. <laughs> Why? Because pigs are going to make it dirty and it's nice. Okay. <laughs> We're getting closer. Zing. <laughs> Zinger. We need a Why don't you help us that? out here, Jeff? Uh, what is the uh, so, next so when, question is uh, what does it mean? So when, when Jesus <laughs> said, don't catch your probe for the swine, the, the information we have, like the gospel, yeah. like for example, we shouldn't be sharing the gospel. Like when you share the gospel with somebody who the Holy Spirit is not drawing and they have no care or concern mm. whatsoever for the gospel, you're casting pearls before the swine. Yeah. The whole concept of casting pearls before the swine is they don't know what the swine don't know the value of the pearls. They don't know what to do with the pearls. They're just going to tr- trample them on. You know, Jesus said to the disciples, man, you go into a town and you're not welcome there. Dust your feet off and go to the next town. Right. Mm. If there's not a person of peace there, dust your feet off and go to the next town. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What about those people? They're not ready. But it also says at the end of that, uh, as you're leaving, tell them that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven's. Mm. I mean, it, it says share truth in that yeah. context too. So, so, you know, so the idea of, man, me trying to convince some, like my ideology, the way I think, the way I want you to see things. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, what's, what's the intent of my heart in that? just so that I can be right. Mm. So again, you've got to ask yourself the question. It, it gets to my heart, not to your heart. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so you're, you know, you believe something, let's say you have a much more liberal view of, uh, an ethical situation and in, in the faith than I do. Mm. Right. And I want you to be more conservative on your view. Okay. So what's my, what's my purpose? What's my intent? Mm-hmm. What's my reasoning to share that with you? Mm. Because I need you to agree with me. I need you to tell me I'm right. Or or I, I love you enough to where that I want to share truth with you because it's really going to change your life. Mm. So, you know, sometimes you just don't cast pearl before the swine. Mm. Sometimes those those conversations aren't right to have. But when the time comes, when it's when, when you know, Jesus said, uh, when the student ready the, when the student is ready, the teacher will be present. Yeah. So we've got to be ready. Yeah. We've got to be ready to have that conversation yeah. when the door opens. And I think that's the I think more of our problem is is that we don't recognize the door being open and have the conversation yeah. than it is us because we want to have conversations about stuff that we want to make sure you believe is wrong like I do. Mm. You know, it kind of takes me back to the days mm-hmm. when I thought every secular every everything in secular music was of the devil. Yeah. And if you didn't believe that, man, you were wrong and I was right. And I it was my job to convince you that you were wrong. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. For for my sake, I needed you to believe like I believed, you know. And 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 I was just I meant to hammer the hammer, you know, I hammer. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, is that man, as you grow and mature in Christ, you kind of start realizing. And I, I wasn't really concerned about the people I talked to. I was more concerned about them believing like I believed. Yeah, because that was the right way to believe, you know. Instead of instead of man looking at you, knowing you, having a relationship with you. And, you know, maybe seeing some areas in your life that, that, that I may go, man, have you ever thought about this? Well, no, I don't really, th- I don't really see it that way. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I get that. No worries. Because what's going to convince you, me or the Holy Spirit? <laughs> I'll never forget. When we, convince when we're, or convict? Convince mm. and convict, two different <laughs> things. I'll never forget, we were in Dahlonega, Georgia, and we were church planners there. And uh, Dahlonega, Georgia was an area where there was a lot of Army Ranger, there was an Army Ranger camp there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they trained guys to be army rangers, and that just happened to be the mountain phase of it. Yeah. And so uh, we started getting uh, Steve Bentley and his family lived across the street from us. Yeah. Steve Bentley was an army ranger. He weighed about 155 pounds, dude. He was he was just a little bitty feisty man. He was awesome. And so so I just started a relationship with him, and they were both bitches lost as they can be, man. Him and his wife mm-hmm. both. Yeah. And so uh, 
dude, you're going to love this. And so we started witnessing to him, sharing with him. And like, eh, okay, whatever, whatever. I'm like, man, I got, I got to get to know this guy. Well, this guy was a boxer. And he goes, hey, man, you want to come over and spar some? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. We want to wrestle? No, man, we can box though. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, for the sake of Jesus, I'm going to go box with this guy. Yeah. Dude, he rung, he rung my bell, man. <laughs> this little dude was like, pa, 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 And I'm just sitting there taking these punches. <laughs> I like man. a punch it back. Oh, man, it was crazy. <laughs> but we developed a great relationship. Well, the guy ends up, man, I, I go over to his house one night and just sharing the gospel with him, it's like for two hours. And the guy gets like, gets saved, dude, like gets crazy mm. saved. Yeah. Like just changes his life. And, but his wife wasn't there. Mm. She's like, I'm just not there, man. I just don't see it the way you see it. And this is where the Lord taught me this. And I said, okay. And so she went outside, and, 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 and she had some issues that she was really passionate about that she felt like conflicted with the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is so crazy. Outside on her front porch, there was a bird's nest, and there were eggs in the, uh, eggs in the nest. And... One day, she, she walked out, and something had happened, and the eggs fell down on the porch, and the eggs cracked open. Mm-hmm. And she, when she looked down at those eggs, there were little baby birds in those eggs. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, that event helped her to believe that life began not when they came out of the egg. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was that event right there that she came to me and said, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, why wouldn't she ready the, the night before, two nights before? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Because what I was telling her at that point was just pearls before the swine to her. Yeah. Until the Holy Spirit wow. used that event in her life yeah. to show her. And, dude, she got saved. And I'm going to tell you something. Those two guys, Steve Billy and his wife, went back to that ranger camp and started leading rangers to Christ. Wow. And, man, we had like six, eight, ten ranger families coming to the church. Mm. Yeah. And, dude, when those guys got saved, man, they were like crazy. Saved Joe Markham, Steve Bentley. I still remember these guys. And this was, man, this was back in late 80s. Yeah. You know, Steve and his wife ended up going into the ministry, and he was a pastor. Yep. And it's a very, very cool story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I, you know, I, I, again, w- w- what's our intent? Yeah. You know, why are we having that? You know, we have to be careful um, that, that we love people more than we want to be right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And if, and if our love for people isn't the reason we're going mm-hmm. and sharing truth, mm-hmm. then it's not about us being right mm-hmm. yep. or notching our belts or feeling like, Ooh, okay, I've done my job. Yeah. Well, and it parallels that the old adage, you can't force motivation. That's Nothing right. you could have done would have moved her. No, it, it had to be the spirit. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I just really wanted her to in come in his to, time. Not yeah. Yours. And he wanted her to come to Christ. Yeah. yeah. Like he was looking at his wife going, please, you mm-hmm. have to make this. And she's like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. And it was wow. that one event. I'll never mm-hmm. forget that, man. Cause they lived right across the street from us and whew, dude boxed my ears, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was just like, I'm doing this for Jesus. Yeah. You know, just getting wrong. <laughs> but man, yeah. what a, yeah. And, and, and we've kind of lost touch with them, obviously, but yeah, but uh, I don't, probably tw- fifteen years ago, maybe twenty years right. ago, we well I heard from him, and man, there seemed like he was in a, in a Hawaii church planning or something. Mm. But yeah, yeah, and what a great example of just that whole uh, the house of peace concept mm. that you mentioned, anyways, of like, like because this is Jesus starting his ministry, he's sending the disciples out ahead of him to find these houses of peace, mm. so that he was they would stay with them, start to plant these seeds in their lives, and then when Jesus came to do ministry there. He would reach them, but we see all throughout Jesus' ministry when he, like, he had his disciples. Um, but like the the de- demoniac man, like when he uh, when he became a follower of Jesus, he didn't. Jesus told him not to follow him, but stay there and reach your right. people. That's right. And so, like, that's a great example of yep. like they came to faith, and then they they're already in the ar- army ranger man group. So like, they just go and and share he the goes back there. to camp. Yeah. And starts telling these guys. Mm. So cool. You know, it makes me think, uh, and one of the coolest examples of you mentioning that, I probably shared this when I was in China, and we went up on top of this mountain, and, and you know, the the missionary there, we went we went to an unreached, unengaged people group, and I was like, well, what are we going to do? Mm. Like, we were the first people to, to, first Americans, as far as we know, yeah. to engage these guys. Mm. And the guy said, we're going to walk around and look for a person of peace. Mm. I'm like, dude, that's your strategy? Like, that's all you got? <laughs> he said, that's what the Bible says to do. I mean, it's such a cool lesson, man. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I didn't understand what that meant. And we just walked around. And sure enough, the first thing we came up against was this small group of Chinese people. And they were working with tobacco. 
And I looked at the missionary and said, dude, I did that when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. He said, let's go talk to him about it. (laughs) I said, okay. So we went over there and we started talking to them about how they, how they do tobacco. Mm -hmm. It wasn't weird that we're Americans on top of this mountain in China, in the interior of China, not like, not like in Shanghai, Beijing, like in the interior of China. Yeah. You know, but they, dude, they just, they just gracefully started talking to us. Yeah. They were people of peace. Yep. And the next thing you know, we're sitting in their circle and they're passing it to us and we're weaving it as they mm-hmm. putting it on sticks, just like you do. And the next thing you know, the missionary's got the, the clan leader over here sharing the gospel in his native language. Wow. I'm like, dude, it works. Like, like the Bible works. <laughs> the Bible works. You know, like our strategy was just walk around and see if you have a person of peace. Yeah. And he said, he said, if we walk around and nobody engages us in conversation, then you know what? We just leave. Okay. And that's <laughs> wow. what we did. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It was cool. Well, yeah, man, I wish we had uh, more time. Maybe we'll dig into this a little more as we yeah. go. But because um, that, that last one, especially what this looks like for us practically mm-hmm. in this culture, uh, which truth, objective truth and subjective opinion. Man. I mean, that, we could go, uh, we could talk about that. It's hard. And, and, it, and yeah, and I don't and, know if there's a perfect, you know, answer it. to it too. That's so. it. Because we want an objective answer. Yeah. yeah. Because we're dealing with something objective. <laughs> yeah. But just to always do this, and this is something I have to check up with myself, all of us have to. I mean, what's the intent of our heart? Mm-hmm. Like that that lets us know, are we going down the path of truth? Or is it really a path mm-hmm. that, that really isn't truth-based? Yeah. And man, if the intent mm-hmm. of my heart is redemption, reconciliation, if I'm sharing truth because I love the person, and then, then you're, you're, you're going down the right path. Yeah. You know, I, our heart's always our check. Mm-hmm. Our spirit, the spirit of God that lives in us is always our check. Yeah. And if we have a check, then we've got to pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Know? Well, it's good stuff. Yep. Next week we got our uh, last one. Don't cover it, right? Oh, we do, man. Yeah. This is a big one. This is number a, ten. This one, number ten. Number ten. As I'm just starting to dig in, is uh, is pretty crazy. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 say this. All the others are external. Number ten is the only one that's internal. Mm. Very interesting. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. So we'll, we'll dig into that more this, this Sunday. Nice. Sounds good. We'll see you all this weekend. See you then. Thanks,